So the next one says the population of India was 1.22 billion in 2013 and is growing 1.28% per year. So since it says it's percent per year, we're going to use this model. P equals P naught. 1 plus the rate to the T. Um, and so the initial value was 1.22 billion. And then our rate is 1.28. So there's our model. So that's the answer to part A. If the growth rate, growth rate stays constant, predict the population in the year 2020. So we need to convert that to a T value. So we know T is the years since 2013. So that would be T equals seven. So we can do P of seven And we can do that. Um, we plug that into our calculator. Um, I get 1.33 billion. Okay. Um, on C, it says use your formula to find the average rate of change from 2013 to 2015. So in 2015, that's when T equals 2, and 2013 is when T equals 0. So what we want to do is compute P of 2 minus P of 0 over 2 minus 0. So, um, so we'll compute... Uh, each of those. So 1.22, 1.0128 the second minus um, P of zero is gonna just be 1.22 um, and then divide by, because when I raise anything to the zero power it's just one so um, the so the initial value is 1.22 um, and then all of that's over two and so we can figure out the value of that. Um, so we, we round that to four decimal places, I get 0 0.0157. And the units of this are, this is billion people. And on the bottom, it's years. So billion people per year. Um, and then using your formula, by what percent did the population increase in the two-year period between 2013 and 2015? So this is asking for a percent, a percent increase. So 2015, again, is when T equals 2. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to figure out um, well, we have 1.22, which is the amount that we started with, and then 1.0128 to the second. So what we want to know is what is this part? Um, in other words, what are we multiplying by 1.22 to get um, to figure out what percent it is? So if I do 1.0128 squared, that gives me 1.0257. times 1.22 and so this tells me that it grew by 2.57 percent oh well I guess if I round it it's 2.58 percent but um yeah 2.576 oops six So 2.58 if you want to round that percent. So the table shows values for a linear function and an exponential function. 
So the question, first of all, is which is linear and which is exponential? So, um, so what are we looking for when we're trying to find a linear function? Well, for a linear function, I want to have a constant rate of change. So I can start by just checking. So if I look at this first setup here for f, I can do um, 3.2 minus 5.12 over 6 minus 3 and see what I get. So I get negative 0.64. And then if I do the next set, 2 minus 3.2 over 6, uh, 9 minus 6. I get negative 0.4. So that is not a constant rate of change. So I suspect that f is not linear. Um, we can check to see if f is, ex is uh, exponential by looking for a constant percentage change. So one thing I'm going to note is that the data are evenly spaced because it goes 3, 6, 9, 12. So um, I can check to see if I have a constant percentage change just by doing the division. Um, so I could do 3.2 divided by 5.12 and see what I get. I get 0.625. And if I do 2 divided by 3.2, I got 0.625, and if I do 1.25 divided by 2, I got 0.625. So I do have a constant percentage change, and um, so we can say that f is exponential. And then I suspect that that means that g is linear, but let's go ahead and check to make sure that g is linear. Um, so we can check that. So let's see if there's a constant rate of change for the function g. So if I do 2.45 minus 3.05 over 6 minus 3, let's see what we get. We get negative 0.2. And then if I do 1.85, minus 2.45 over 9 minus 6. I get negative 0.2. And I suspect I would get the same constant rate of change if I did that the next one. So let's say f is exponential, g is linear. And so I know my rate of change for g is negative 0.2. So, so g of x is equal to negative 0.2x plus my initial value, which I don't know. Um, but I can use one of my pairs of points. I can use this 3.05 and 3 and plug those in and solve for that b. So 3.05 is equal to negative 0.2 times uh, 3 plus b. And so I can um, add that over. and I get um, b equals 3.65. So my g of x is equal to negative 0.2x plus 3.65. Okay, and how do I find the exponential function? So I know, um, I know that uh, my model is going to be um, f of x is equal to a b to the x, and so I can plug in some values and solve for a and b. So, um, so if I plug in so if I plug in like three point or sorry five point one two, I'm gonna plug in like 
these points here. Um, so I get 5.12 is equal to a times 3, oh, sorry, uh, b to the 3. And then I could plug in this pair of points. 3.2 equals a times b to the 6th. And then I could divide those two to get rid of the a. So 5.12 um, divided by 3.2 gives me 1.6. Um, and if I divide that, the a divided by a goes away, and b cubed times b to the sixth is going to be b to the negative third. <coughs> and so then I could take both sides to the negative one-third power. So 1 1.6 to the negative one-third power is going to be equal to b. So raise that to the negative one-third power. And that gives me 0.8549. Uh, it says round the parameters to four decimals. So that's 0.85498, so 0.855. Okay, so um, that gives me the value of B, and now I can find the value of A by using the value of B that I had. So I can plug in 5.12 is equal to A times 8.855 to the third, and I can divide that. Um, and I get 8.1916. So f of x is equal to 8.1917 times 0.855 to the x. All right, so the next one um, in 2000, the U.S. produced 60.6 million metric tons of wheat. And then here's some more information, data from 2014. Find a formula for f of t assuming linear growth. Um, so are we saying that t is the number of years since um, 2000, I guess? doesn't explicitly say, but we can do that. So let's let t be the number of years since 2000, and we can um, utilize that data. So, um, so if we know the amount that was produced in 2000, that's my initial value. So f of t is equal to mt plus b. So I know my b is 60.6. That's my initial value. Okay, and then I need to find my slope or my rate of change. So I can do that by change in amount produced divided by change in years. So 55.4 minus 60.6 over um, four years, oh, 14 years. Okay, and so I get 1.5. Negative 0.3714. So f of t is equal to negative 0.3714 plus a t plus 60.6. Um, then find a formula for g of t assuming exponential growth round the parameters to three decimal places. So g of t is going to be a, b to the t. So I know my initial value is 60.6, b to the t. And then I can plug in this data. So 55.4 is equal to 60.6, b to the 14th power. And then I want to solve for b. So first I'll divide both sides by 60.6 and then take the 14th root. So 55.4 divided by 60.6 to the 1 14th power is going to give me my b. 
So let's put that in our calculator. 55.4 divided by 60.6 .6 raised to the 114th power. Um, my calculator says that's 0.9936. Okay, so 0.994, I guess, if you wanted to round it. So g of t is equal to 60.6 .6 times 0.994 to the t. Um, using each of the formulas, what is the expected wheat production in the year 2020? Um, so for that, we're just going to plug in t equals 20. To both of those and so we'll get f of 20 and we'll get g of 20 and so we just are going to use the um, functions and so when we plug that into f we get um, negative 0.371 times 20 plus 60.6 .6, and that gives us 55 53.18 and then for g of 20, I have 60.6 um, .6 times 0.994 to the 20th power. That gives me 53.73. Um, next, I want to find a formula for that exponential function. So that's going to be similar to what we had done before. So I'm just going to use the model a, b to the t. So a, uh, so, so we can plug them both in. So um, y equals a, b the t, to the x. And so we're going to plug it in. So 4 equals a, b to the first. And 2.56 equals a, b cubed. And then I can divide uh, divide those two. So um, 4 divided by 2.56 is 1.5625. And then a divided by a is 1. And b, the first divided by b to the third is b to the negative 2. And then I can take the negative, well, the uh, negative 1 half power of both sides. So b is equal to 1.5625 to the negative 1 half. And that gives me 0.8. Okay, and so now I know um, I can, I know I'll go back to my model, but I know my b is 0.8. So I can say y equals a times 0.8 to the x. And, to the x and then I can plug in my values I'll use the 1 and 4 just for ease there so I can say 4 is equal to a times 0.8 to the first and then I can divide by 0.8 and I get a equals 5 so my formula is y equals 5 times 0.8 to the x All right, next one. Assume the equations for a, b, c, and d could be written in that form. Which of the two functions has the largest a value? Which function has the largest a value? So a, I know to be the y-intercept. So the largest a value happens on function b. Which two functions have the same a value? So I'm noticing that two functions cross here. So that's function C and A. Which function has the smallest B value? So one thing I'll notice is that C and D have positive B values, or greater than one, and A and B have B values that are less than one. So since b gets smallest fastest, I know that b, the function b, has the smallest b value. 
And if I look for the largest B value, it's going to be the function that gets the steepest fastest. So C gets steep faster than D. So C has the largest B value. It's a pop, uh, it gets, as uh, X increases, it, it grows at the fastest rate. On 20, I have let F of X be defined by that function. As x goes to negative infinity, what happens to f of x? So if I think about that function, this function here, um, well, it's shifted up by 5.4 units. And then the rest of it just looks like an exponential. So it's going to go like that. So as x goes towards a negative infinity, my function value is getting closer and closer to 5.4. Um, next it asks, does f of x have a horizontal asymptote? Yes, it does. And what is the horizontal asymptote? It's the line y equals 5.4. Okay, number 21. A five-year CD is opened with an initial $6,000 deposit at a rate of 2.9% compounded monthly. So that gives us this model, 6,000 times one plus, and that 2.9% is an annual rate, but it's compounded monthly. So I'll need to divide it by 12. 0 0.029 divided by 12. And I wanna raise that to the, um, well, if T is measured in years, it's gonna be 12T, where T is in years. Okay, and so um, how much will that earn in five years? So I can compute that. 1 plus 0 0.029 over 12 to the 12 times 5, and I get 6,935, and I'll just round to two decimals because it's money. Okay, and then now it asks, what's the effective rate? So what it's really wanting to know is, what is this value? And so if I compute that, um, 1 plus 1 over, oh sorry, 0 0.029 over 12 raised to the 12th power, I get 1.02938. So that means it's that my effective rate is 2.94%. So I rounded to two decimal places for that. The last one says, suppose two milligrams of a drug is injected into a person's bloodstream. As the drug is metabolized, the quantity diminishes at a continuous rate of 4% per hour. Find a formula for the quantity remaining after two hours. So, um, so my initial amount is two milligrams and my rate is, it's diminishing at 4%, so it's going to be a negative. Um, so a, a QOT is equal to 2e to the negative 0.04t. Find a formula for q of t in the form that form. So essentially, I want to convert this part into a b. So b is equal to e to the negative 0.04, which is um, 90, 0.96078. Seven oh nine six oh eight. If I round it, um, so Q of T is equal to two times point nine six oh eight to the T. And then, by what percent does the drug level decrease during any given hour? So I want to think about that point nine six oh eight is equal to one plus the rate. That's the effective like hourly rate. And then I can subtract. 
and I get negative negative 0 0.0392, so 3.92%. It says decrease in the problem, so we can write it positively because the negative's already built into the question. And then it says, by what percent does the drug level decrease in five hours? So what we want to do is we want to compute 0 0.9608 to the fifth, And that's 0.81877. And then I want to do that that 0.81877 is equal to 1 plus the 5-hour rate. And so that'll give me r equals negative 0.1812. So that's 18.12%.